Hello, um, I'm Sophia A. Jackson, editor and founder of Aphrodisiac Theatre News, and I'm joined today by Judith Jacob. Hello, how are you? Hello, my lovely. I am good, thank you. Wonderful. Um, so I'm really honoured to be speaking to you today, especially as I remember watching you in the brilliant TV series No Problem, and of course EastEnders when I was growing up. Um, so yeah, this is a real treat for me. So you are starring in the White Witch of Rose Hall, which opens next month at the Bloomsbury Theatre. How are rehearsals going, especially with all of the COVID restrictions? Rehearsals are going fine. With COVID restrictions means that we have to test ourselves twice a week. This is the new world we live in. Mm -hmm. and, but, you know, it, and nobody's really hugging each other as much as I'm used to. I'm used to a very, I'm a very tactile person. Yeah. So we're not doing much of that. But apart from that, it's all good. Wonderful. Um, and can you tell me about the character that you play and a bit about the play as well itself? Because it's not something that I've been to Rose Hall, but I'm not familiar. Oh, have you? Yeah, a long time ago. Um, but I'm not familiar with this production, actually. And it's also, it's really nice just to have um, Black playwrights that are you know, coming out of the archives now. So yeah, could you tell us a bit more about it? Well, my character, Princess, she, this is a time of enslavement of our people. And um, she is, she's been working with the rebellion, but she's, while she's been, when you first see her, you're not sure what's going on. And as you go on, you discover that she actually has been part helping the rebellion as in with the women she's helping them to miscarry so they don't bring any more children into to work on the plantations and then um, and she is in league with the white witch who's come over who's part of the liberal whites but we don't know that much whether she how liberal she is or is it just for her own sake really but she has helped her to kill the man that is um the slave, the enslaver, the murdering man that he is. So, but that's because she wants to get exact revenge on him for what's happened to her, yeah. as in her life killed by him and her brothers. So that's what she's trying to exact revenge for. So it's for her own ends, but it also satisfies princess's ends as well. So is it a love story or a slave narrative, or is it a bit of both? I think it's a bit of both. There's definitely a, slay, a, a love story unfolding underneath it. Yeah. But there's um, definitely other stuff happening because it's about the enslavement time. I mean, this is my first time of being in a play that's about enslavement. I find it very traumatic to just be there, to be involved in reading it anyways, it, to me is very traumatic, but then being in it and then having to think about what my ancestors would have had to endure is kind of, yeah. So what are you doing? You said that it's traumatic. So what are you doing to, in terms of um, self-care? Like how do you not take this home and have a heavy heart about it? You know, I, I feel like I'm living in a constant state of trauma anyway because of everything I'm reading. So I'm constantly editing what I read now because sometimes it's just too much. And I like to read now, of when I, whenever I read about the heroic people that we just don't hear about, yeah. I, I feed myself those stories. And that's mm. what I'm doing. I'm feeding on, on the stories that I don't know about that we've, that's been suppressed deliberately, yeah. but so that I empower myself and know that they would say that the, 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 the lion tells his own story, right? So I'm, I want us to now be the lions of our stories so that we can be telling those stories more. Yeah, but it must be also quite difficult because you were saying that, that obviously you're used to hugging, well, we're all used to hugging and working on a production like this, I guess it would be quite useful if you could actually hug each other um, to help with the trauma. I put it out in the ether now, Sophia. So I've been getting some hugs. I've deliberately said, oh, this is the least huggiest company I've ever been with. And someone said, well, do you want a hug? So then I got a hug. So now I'm getting a couple of hugs a day. <laughs> well, I guess essentially you're all in a bubble anyway. So I feel yeah, like exactly. That's fine. And we're not that strict anymore because we've had freedom today. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so we're not quite as strict with our two meters and all of that stuff. But I just think that it's been internalized. This yeah. not hug. And so people immediately doesn't don't do it anymore. And then I'm the one going, why? 
And then someone, you want a hug? But yeah, come on. So, yeah, I definitely want a hug. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, going back to the pandemic, actually, how did you how did you find it? Did you take anything positive? Have you taken anything positive away from it? It was good for me because it slowed me right down. I was I didn't live in my house. I I slept in my house, but I've lived in my house. I've spent time in my home with my yeah. because we were all off the same time. So my daughter and my partner, we were all together, yeah. and we were really blessed because the sun sh- shone. Yeah. We had to- whole time yeah and we ain't fun. I've got a little roof so I spent my whole time on my roof sitting there pretending I was on a holiday so we were drinking carver oh it's 12 o'clock must be time for a glass of carver oh, oh. so now I put on a bloody stone in a bit because of my drinking and just not moving but I had a and also became very creative because myself and I'm with the ladies the BB crew and we were writing spent a lot of time writing and just putting stuff down so I think the creative people got creative yeah. in this time. Yeah, that's really that's really nice to hear, actually. Um, but go, okay, so going back to the White Witch, so there is a lot of talk at the moment about focusing on black trauma. Did you have any hesitations? And also, nobody really wants to talk about slavery. Did you have any hesitations about being involved in this production? Mm, well, I. I mm, Sort of, but I had to read the script because I was came in late on, on. I mean, not late for rehearsals, but I was I was pulled in at like the day before rehearsals was going to start because the actual actress who was good at this whole COVID thing, she's stuck in Canada, and if she came over, she would have had to then do two weeks isolation. So, it, so I came in as a replacement for an amazing actress called Laverne Archer. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, so I came as a replacement. So I said, well, let me read the script. And if the character wasn't who she is, I probably wouldn't have done it. Right. But because of that, because I just, yeah. I want to be involved in a story that makes me feel uplifted. And because her character is like that, I thought, yeah, yeah I could play this part. Yeah, I just, I thought it'd be good to touch on that just because it has been such a traumatic time for so many people that when you go, if you are going to embark on going to the theatre, you, you want to feel uplifted, you don't want to be <laughs> further traumatised. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to clarify that we're going to be okay if we come and watch it. You'll be okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There'll be a lot of yeah by the end then, I think. So. Okay. That, that's good to know. Um. So theatres have been dark for so many months and I'm really pleased that we can enjoy theatre in real life again. Um, and it's just not the same watching theatre on Zoom. It, it, it's fine, but it's just not the same, is it? So um, how do you feel about getting back on stage? I'm excited to be on stage. Funnily enough, I had worked it outside theatre and one inside of the tricycle and outside for um, the Stratford East but we would the productions were happening in different ways in the lockdown which is quite, quite interesting yeah and political as well the, the work that was going on yeah. and since theatre has been back I have been I've seen three plays already I've got another three plays I've booked to see I have just been finding dates yep I want to see that and yep I'm gonna go see that one and two of them have been uh, one women shows okay which has been really great to see what were they and one was at the Soho Theatre and Shedding Skin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was Amanda. And then at the Bush, Lava. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm trying to think the third play I went to see, I went to see another one. And I've got all these other ones booked. Oh, no, it didn't happen. I was meant to go to the old Young Vic, but it got cancelled. And I'm assuming it was because of COVID. If somebody gets it, they have the whole production. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got to... Re- Okay, so that's what it was. It was that I was meant to see, but it got cancelled. So yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm so excited to be going to theatre. I just I've literally yes that one, yes that one, yes that one. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's it's great. Um, so what would you? Uh, so we can theatres can open to full capacity now, but I know that a lot of people do have reservations still. Um, what would you say to anyone who does feel like they're not ready to go to the theatre yet? Well, the theatres I've been to, they've been socially distanced. Both of the productions I went to see were socially distanced. Yeah. They're doing, uh, they're doing the, the temperature test before you get in. 
and unless you're exempt, which I am, you have to wear a mask. Yeah. Uh, I, I think theatre is doing everything it can to make sure we have bums on seats because actually social distancing in theatre doesn't work because they need as many bums on seats as possible because it's yeah. not, you know, it, it needs it to be Thank able to you. survive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you have mentioned that you were quite creative during lockdown. So can you share some of those projects with us? Uh, you mentioned the BB crew, are you, are you coming back? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. We've got a couple of ideas bubbling. We wanna do a, a, a podcast, but we wanna do, do it as a live radio audience. There's a word for it, live audience show that we want to yeah. do. Yeah. And we've got um, a theater piece that's, we probably need a little bit more work on. We thought we'd, we thought we'd had the final draft with, but with other work to be done, but we think we need another draft on it. So we're just going to work on that. Yeah. We've got another comic we've written for Telly, but Telly is just, you know, it, it has its own leisurely time it works and we don't have any control of that. Like theatre, I think you've got more control. You can hire a theatre or whatever, but yeah. with Telly, it's a different ball game. So we've certainly been working on that and and to just do next year will be our 30th year of BB crew. So we plan to do something to celebrate that. Yeah, so, yeah. you're going to do something big. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, we've we've got a couple of ideas built on one day. <laughs> well, definitely keep us posted on that, please. <laughs> yeah, we'll do, we'll do. Thank you. And also, I wanted you to talk a bit more about your radio shows as well, in case people aren't aware. Right, well, I do two shows. I'm on Conscious Radio, which is 102 with them, and I do a show one till four on a Thursday. And it te- the, the format for me is I'm me for the first hour, then I tend to have a guest at the second hour, and the third hour is back to me again, so, which I thoroughly enjoy. And I've had some amazing guests, people that I probably would never get to meet in real life, but... Yeah because because I can't have access it's been fantastic so I've really enjoyed that and then on Monday on um, Injection Radio we have a magazine show myself and Keith Palmer do you know Keith Palmer he runs the comedy school he's the artistic director anyway so we do a magazine show on that we have we get in a personality to do the news so normally they, those people will be interviewed but we have them to talk as them what's mm-hmm what in the news has caught their eyes. So we have them in. Then we have a big up section where somebody just comes on and we've had people big up areas and, and food and that kind of thing. And then we have our final guest is somebody that we actually interview. So that's the format of the show. It's a two hour show. It's mainly chat with some music in between. And when is that's, it on? That's four to six on a Monday, the drive time. <laughs> I sure tune into that thank you um I also wanted to just ask a random question which is could you share one of your early theatre experiences and some of the favorite your favorite shows that you saw when you were younger if you can remember Hmm. right okay one of the shows that sticks out in my mind I don't know it's necessarily my favorite show but it's stuck out in my mind and now what was it called oh it's a really long title why do colored women something or the other and it was it was set in america and there was a bit where they had talking heads and and you had to all these heads in on the table and their heads were up and it's basically yeah and it was talking about black women in their hair and and stuff it was set in america i wish i could remember the title why do colored women something 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 okay okay uh, so that was one of the plays I saw and it just stood out for because it was very different to anything I'd seen before yeah um and uh, what one that I've been in did you say no when you were one of your early theatre memories like when did you start okay going? Yeah. yeah well see I didn't go to theatre really I tell you what I did go to see which was Black Theatre Co-op Welcome Home Jacko okay. because they were Black Theatre Cup was really breaking all kinds of boundaries and putting on shows that was yeah. our generation. Yeah. Showing their experiences of being in London as the first generation born here. Yeah. So, 
And Welcome Home Jacko was definitely about that because it was about a soldier that had come back home. Mm-hmm. And he'd been all that, and he was a sub he was a black guy in, in the army, come back, and life hadn't been much better when he got back. You know? So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, why should we come and watch The Right Witch of Rose Hall? Well, it's an interesting piece. It's written by an African man, African Caribbean. It's, it, and I think it is, it's, it's not as, it's not just trauma. It is what I'm talking about as in showing how people when, cause we never get shown the rebellions that's happened. Yeah. We hear about pieces, but we don't really in the Caribbean, you get about, hear about Bogle and, and more coming out, but not enough. And this is showing you the beginning of an uprising that, that was going on. Cause Haiti in this piece, Haiti is just, but Toussaint Louverture has just, taken over Haiti so we know that it's all the beginning of our pricing so I think it's empowering okay yeah it definitely does sound positive um okay well thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me and I look forward to coming to see the play next month as well yay and come and see us <laughs> I will definitely have a good day take care thank you thank you you take care my lovely bye-bye bye